Hi, I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. And for tonight's Plano City Council recap, we had our second ever virtual meeting. Now in the preliminary open meeting, we had three presentations. The first was from the uh, Animal Services Department. Their report, uh, I believe for 10 years, they said there have been zero euthan euthanized animals due to space limitations. Some uh, euthanasia had to occur with animals because it was just the most humane thing to do, but none for space reasons. <clears throat> uh, we, I was surprised to learn that uh, the Plano Animal Shelter has, is considered most likely to have the most number of visits uh, on an annual basis out of any city in, uh, in the DFW Metroplex. And uh, there are a number of animals there uh, waiting to be adopted. And uh, they, so your next family member is waiting for you. And it is important to register your pets. Not only does uh, this provide much needed uh, funding from the registration fees for the animal shelter services, but also it provides a way for your pet to be uh, returned to you in the case that uh, they are lost. Uh, we had a presentation from the Comprehensive, Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. Uh, that is proceeding. There was a, a canceled meeting due to the pandemic, and uh, they have, uh, they're working on re-enabling um, virtual meetings now. <clears throat> so they will be proceeding with that this month. And uh, to nobody's surprise, density was um, one of the highest discussion points. They are focusing on land use, uh, transportation, density, and growth management. Uh, they are discussing deferring the density um, discussion amongst the uh, Comprehensive Plan Review Committee until PISD is available. As you can well imagine, PISD has had their hands full lately, uh, given the pandemic and trying to enable remote learning for all the students in the district. And so they're, uh, they're going to take a look at that at the meeting. Uh, we then moved on to a discussion about the housing tax pro uh, credit process. <clears throat> now, this involves a credit from the state, um, the TDHCA, um, and <clears throat> that, that's for um, rental, uh, low-income rental housing. Now, under current rules, uh, or I should say just prior to current rules, <clears throat> um, there is a new rule in 2020 at the state level that uh, you can only have one approved project per census tract. But uh, the prior rule was that you could have two projects in competition with each other uh, in the city where uh, I termed it Highlander rules. There can be only one um, because they are in competition and <clears throat> there, there are certain rules that apply where they are in such close proximity that only one project can be awarded the tax credit even though dozens may be awarded at the state level or, or up to 150 maybe. Um, no, I think it was uh, 75 or so, <clears throat> but uh, total across the state were awarded uh, last year. But um, if you've got two that are in such close proximity, given certain rules criteria, then only one of them can be awarded at the state level, but not both. That's why I termed it Highlander rules. There can be only one. So <clears throat> currently with the city of Plano scoring rubric, we determine what will get our support. And then a letter of support from the city of Plano, go, or a statement of support, resolution of support, goes to the state for them to evaluate it, for the TDHCA to evaluate it. And it could be that there are two projects <clears throat> that are operating under Highlander rules uh, where there can be only one um, awarded the housing tax credit of 9%, and yet, the city of Plano offers a statement of support for or a resolution of support for both of them. So one of the things that was discussed, uh, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Riccardelli brought it up, and I agreed with this, <clears throat> is that if there are two or more such competing projects within Plano, uh, because, as Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Riccardelli said, we are closest to it, then we should be the gatekeepers for that. The decision should be made as locally as possible. It should be made by the city council. We should not then punt it, punting was my uh, word, to the state to decide between them. So we will revisit our own scoring criteria and our own uh, scoring um, or our own support methodology in the fall so that uh, next time this comes around, as it did a couple of months ago, uh, between two projects, 
uh, Park on 14th and Patriot Park Seniors, <clears throat> then we as the city council should be charged with picking which one advances to the state instead of just awarding them both um, uh, as many marks as we can and then uh, letting the state figure it out. So expect that coming up in the fall. Uh, that was all in our preliminary open meeting, and then we moved to the regular meeting. Uh, we issued a proclamation for April is 2020 Census Month in Plano. Now, if you have not already completed your census, please do so. It's important for so many reasons. First and most importantly, as laid out in the Constitution, the census is directed by the Constitution to happen every 10 years to determine how many state representatives there are, or I'm sorry, not state representatives, but uh, congressional representatives there are in the U.S. House of Representatives in each state. Now, the more people there are in a state, the more U.S. representatives you have representing your state in Congress. The fewer people you have, the fewer representatives you have. So this is your chance to ensure representative government in the halls of Congress. <clears throat> when you are not counted, then you get that fewer number of U.S. representatives representing you in Congress. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean they won't rep be representing other people, so your level of representation comes down commensurately. So please complete your census. On top of that, having accurate numbers, not just of U.S. citizens, but of actual people living here. Um, <clears throat> having accurate count of that helps provide uh, so many services at the federal, state, and local levels. Uh, we have an accurate, a more accurate idea when you complete the census of how many people in which uh, particular demographics uh, need small business assistance or or need uh, or or have transportation needs for that matter. Imagine if nobody in Plano, I know that's not going to happen, but imagine if nobody in Plano completed the census. Well, according to TxDOT and the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, we wouldn't need any roads in Plano. We all know that's not the case, so that's just another example of why you need to complete the census, stand up, or rather sit down and be counted, because this year you can complete your census entirely online. We moved into the uh, consent agenda. Uh, three items were pulled out. One was approval of the minutes. There was just a, a minor change to that, um, <clears throat> just in the uh, phraseology. Uh, we did pull out a consent agenda item, uh, which we deferred until a, uh, a meeting in late May, a council meeting on May 26th. Uh, we just want to better assess the economic impact from the pandemic uh, before we move forward with this expense and an award. And then uh, we also, this engendered the largest discussion, uh, we pulled out the item for the renewal of the contract for the, um, uh, the municipal judges, the chief judge and the associate judges and contract judges. Now, the discussion hinged not on whether to renew the contract, but whether we should uh, renew those contracts on a two-year or a four-year basis. Currently, they renew every four years. Uh, we discussed, uh, Councilwoman 2 uh, brought up the notion of moving that to a two-year contract cycle. I supported that. Uh, as I noted in the meeting, I can see the merit of that because we have the potential for a new council every two years. Uh, our um, council elections, four seats out of eight, are up every two years in odd number years. So we had an election last year, of course, and we will have an election next year with four totally different seats than were up last year. <clears throat> so that uh, renewing the contracts on a two-year cycle would give each new council, made up of whomever it's made up by, uh, the opportunity after about 10 months on the council to evaluate that contract for the upcoming two years. Now, right now, we do that every four years. So from tonight, uh, tonight's renewal, and I'll, I'll you know, spoiler alert, uh, the measure to, or the proposal to change to a two-year contract term failed. And so the contract was renewed for four years, and so four years from now, we'll revisit it again. One of the points of discussion that came up, which I feel is important to touch on, is the idea of the separation of powers between the legislative function, which is what council serves in, and the, the judicial function, which is what the municipal uh, judge and the municipal court serves in. And that is absolutely true. The city council should not get in the middle of what the court is doing. 
However, under current statute, city charter, everything, we're already charged with the degree of oversight of the municipal court by which we appoint the judge every four years and the uh, associate judges and renew those contracts. Um, I do not believe that we should have any oversight beyond the appointment of the judge and the uh, associate judges, but we still are charged with that. So if the question is we should go to two years from four years or we should stick with four years, if the concern in that discussion is about the separation of powers between the legislative and the judicial, then the discussion we ought to be having is should the city council appoint those judges to begin with at all, ever? Uh, because we're only talking about frequency tonight, not uh, whether and, or, or how much. <clears throat> so uh, the, the renewal of the contracts passed. Um, and so we, we may revisit this at some point in the future, maybe not. But uh, I feel those are the salient points. Uh, we are slimming down our council meetings during the pandemic to the most important things to tackle, uh, in addition to the presentations that we need to stay abreast of things like the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee. So uh, we will have our next meeting in a couple of weeks, and I wish you all a very uh, safe two weeks. Please abide by social distancing restrictions. Please exercise prudence when going about your business, um, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, please, we wanna hear from you. Good night and God bless.